Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys an algorithm I developed that hooks up with Robinhood so that you can trade cryptocurrencies intraday. So for this particular strategy, all it's doing is using uh, Bollinger Bands. So whenever it crosses the bottom band, I'll end up sending an order to buy. And the signal to close out the positions is whenever the asset crosses the middle band. Unfortunately, we can't sell shorts on Robinhood. So this is a long only strategy. Please keep in mind that this is not financial advice and I'm just showing you guys how the setup works. So for this tutorial we have two scripts and if you've seen my previous videos on algorithmic trading you will find this script to be very similar. So the main script contains the setup and the other script ending in fun contains all the functions that we will be needing or requiring. So for the main script I'm calling all the functions by sourcing them. Once you source the script you will find a time difference variable and this variable will contain the difference in hours from your location to UTC time or UTC time zone. So whenever I call this get TMZ, it will generate a sequence of times and I'm using a five minute interval. So this will run every five minutes. These time intervals will be used as start times for the algorithm. So in essence, I'm just looping through the time sequences. And then this very next line is just to eliminate any timestamps that have already passed in order for it to start at the very next timestamp. I have also created the sleep function which will sleep until the very next bar. Here in the scan block, I have the instructions. So I'll be sourcing my functions again. The coin I'm trading is Ethereum. So just enter the coin you want to trade here. Now for this get historicals crypto, I'm using the Robinhood package. And unfortunately this package doesn't have a function to get historical data for cryptocurrencies. So I ended up making one. I will email the package developer to see if we can add this function to the package. And how it works is you just enter the coin you want to trade, the interval, which will be five minutes in this case. The span is just a week, so I'm getting five minute data for a week. And the bounds are 24 seven. So I will get data for a week in five minute intervals, which will contain continuous data for that week. So after we get the historical data, I'll get the latest quote and I'm going to rbind the latest quote to our historical data. This will ensure that we get the latest or most up to date quote. The next thing I'll do is calculate the Bollinger Bands and then assign it to crypto. After that's done running, I will send any orders if we generate a signal. So I'm passing in crypto, I'm passing in the ticker. Here you will want to modify this to how many dollars you want to invest in this particular asset. So here I just have it set to $100. And after that's done running, I will print the last six variables. So I have this actually running. We print the last six variables. So again, it's the open, high, low, close and the Bollinger Bands. And this last column with all the zeros is the signal. So it'll be open, high, low, close, and this is the lower band. So here we see that Ethereum is trading above the lower band, so no signal is generated for this particular bar. You may also notice that for the timestamps, the latest bar is off by 10 minutes, and that's because Robinhood actually uses the start of the bar, and I'm using the ending of the bar. So this will continue to run until the time sequences are exhausted, but if you want to manually stop it, just press escape, and it should stop the script. All right, so that's it for this main script. Now let's go take a look at the functions. I'm going to generate a new environment to save my username and password. So whatever your username and password is to access Robinhood, just enter them here. Next, we will calculate the time difference from your location or your time zone to UTC time. So for me, since I'm in the Pacific, my time difference is eight hours and we will need this time difference later. Now to get historical data, from Robinhood, we will use get historicals crypto. And here I just provided a reference for you to use. So for the intervals, we can go as low as 15 seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes, hourly data, daily data, or weekly data. For the span, we can use hours, days, weeks, months, three months, year, and five year. And for the bounds, here I have also provided a reference. So for 24 seven, it's just 24 hours a day. Extended is 16 hours a day. Regular is six hours a day and trading is nine hours. So whatever bars you want to trade, make sure it's one of these. So how this function works is I'm going to establish a connection with Robinhood. I'm going to pass in a URL to get the currency pairs by passing in the coin name. This will generate a data frame with all the coins available to trade on Robinhood. And all I need from that data frame is the assets ID. So here I'm just extracting the ID and then I'm going to use another URL to get the actual data by passing in the crypto ID, coin name, the interval, the span, and the bounds. And then I'm just going to pass in my access token to get the data. I'm going to format the timestamps. I'm going to rearrange some columns here and then I'm logging out of Robinhood. 
And after I log out, I'm just returning the data, which will contain the open, high, low, close for that particular asset. The next function I use is called get latest crypto quote. Again, I'm just establishing a connection. I'm getting the quote. I'm extracting only the open, high, low, and the mark price or the latest price. I'm going to rbind that with my historical data. And then just finally rbind my historical data with the latest quote. So that's all this function is doing. So for the Bollinger Band strategy, I'm passing in my historical data. I'm going to convert it into an XCS object. I'm going to use the B bands function to calculate the Bollinger Bands. I'm going to combine that with my historical data. And here you'll see the signals. So whenever the closing price crosses the moving average, we will close out. And whenever the closing price is below the bottom band, I'm going to go long. So after the signals have been generated, I will use NALOCF. This will fill in the signal for the other times. And I'm also going to use lag so that I don't trade that very same bar. And then finally, just return the historical data, the Bollinger Bands, and the signal. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this function. So the following three functions are just pertaining to the orders. So this very first one, I'm passing in my data, which will have the open, high, low, close, the Bollinger Bands, and the signal. I'm just focusing on the very last two observations. So if the previous bar has a zero and the very current bar is a one, that means I will have to open a position, which is the very next function. Similarly, if the previous bar is a one and the current bar is a zero, that means I need to close my positions. So I will use close order. And if the previous bar is a zero and the current bar is a zero, that means we do nothing and we just get a printout that says nothing to buy or close. So for this function, you will need to pass in the data, the ticker and the amount you want to trade. So to open the order, I'm going to print out opening a position. I'm going to establish a connection with Robinhood and then I will place an order passing in my Robinhood connection, my ticker. I'm going to send a limit order, but you can also use a market order. Now for the time and force, the documentation says good to cancel, immediate or cancel or opening. I tried using IOC and OPG, but kept getting errors. So I just set the time and force to GTC. Now for the price, I'm just grabbing the very latest price from our open, high, low, close data. I'm rounding that to two decimal places and returning it as a character. For some reason, the price and the quantity have to be set to as character or else you will get an error. So for the quantity, I'm just dividing the dollar amount we want to invest by the latest quote or the latest price and the side will just be buy. So after we send the order, we log out of Robinhood. Similarly for the closed order, same convention, we will establish a connection with Robinhood. We will get the order history for all the crypto assets in our account. I'm only going to subset the crypto that we are actually trading in case you have other crypto assets in your portfolio. So this will just limit the transactions to the ticker you are passing through. And then I'm going to extract the very latest order that we submitted for that particular crypto asset. And here I set a condition. So if the number of shares does not equal zero and it's not an NA, then go ahead and close out our positions. This ensures that we don't actually send an order when we don't have that crypto asset in our portfolio. So if we actually have an open position, I'm going to extract the quantity, that's the number of shares, to close out. And I will use the very latest price, even though this is just a market order. Otherwise, just skip a line and then log out of Robinhood. So that's it for the closed order. Now in order to get the times or the sequence of bars to trade, you will need to pass in the time and force or the bar that you want to trade. So I'm using the five minute bars and I'm also going to pass in the time difference. So the start time will just be the current time rounded to the bar size you want to trade. And then I'm going to adjust the start time by the number of hours in our time difference. I'm going to add 24 hours to the start time and then I'll create a sequence of timestamps. For the sleep function, so this function has the instructions on the amount of time the computer should go to sleep, whether that's hours, minutes, or seconds, which will ensure that we start at the very next available bar. So here I'll close this function out. So that's it for all the functions. So if you don't want to use the Bollinger Bands, you would just remove this function and you would have to code up something that generates signals in order for this to trade. Other than that, I think as long as you have something that generates signals, everything else should work just fine. So if you want to backtest this strategy using different time intervals, all you have to do is get the historicals, calculate the crypto bands, and then below this function, I will go ahead and add another function, which will just extract the returns so that you can go ahead and plot this to see how the equity curve actually is. Now, if you want to trade multiple crypto assets, all you really have to do is insert a sequence of crypto assets that you want to trade. So say I want to also trade Bitcoin, I would just use BTC here. 
and then I will use L apply. I'm going to pass them as a list. And then I'll do function, I'll do coin, and then I'll assign it to something temporary. And then here, I will just close out my brackets. So you would do something like this, where you would pass in the crypto assets you want to trade as a list, and you would just apply this to all the coins that you want to trade. Just note that this will actually run a little longer, but just try to focus on one coin at a time. So I'll just leave it how it was. So again, if you want to just start this algorithm, you would just run these three lines and then run these two together. All right, guys. Well, that concludes this video. I hope this tutorial was useful and informative. Let me know if you have any questions. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.